Uh, and I have a specific flowchart method for solving this. Uh, so let me show you how this goes. First, uh, identify all the ligands. Find all the ligands, identify them. Remember, ligands are different than counter ions. And put them in alphabet, alphabetical order. So, right, find all the ligands and put them in alphabetical order. And also, uh, you must put a prefix uh, for the number. What does that mean? Uh, I'll show you. Let me get a different color pen out for this. If there's one ligand, really you don't have to worry about it. But if there's two that are the same, you put di. So if there's two chlorines, you put dichloro. If there's three chlorines, you put trichloro. If there's four chlorines, you put tetrachloro. If there's five, you put penta. And if there's six, you put hexa. You're really not going to go above six. Not in our class. So you put those prefixes to name the number of ligands because they're somewhat covalent bonds. And whenever we're talking about covalent, you must have a prefix. Okay, so that's the ligands. Oh, uh, side category of that. I'll put that above. Ligands, th this is only for ligands that are monodentate. These are only monodentate prefixes. If you have a polydentate ligand and there's more than one of them, you must use a very special prefix that ends in is or kiss. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean. It makes no sense when I say that. But uh, For two polydentate ligands, you put bis, and I'll show you why later. For three, you put tris, and for, you're not really going to go above three, but I'll just show you so you can see. Uh, you'd put tetra kiss for four. Penta kiss, hexa kiss, hepta kiss, etc. But you wouldn't really go that high. Okay, so that's the first section. Identify all ligands and put them in alphabetical <coughs> order. Next step find the uh, transition metal oxidation state. This is just like we've done before, just like we did in the very first class of Chem 2A. You've got to find the oxidation state of the transition metal. Okay, now here is where we deviate. Um, you need to find the uh, complex ion charge. So you need to know is the complex ion, remove the counter ions, take them off, and is the complex ion positively charged or negatively charged? And that one thing totally determines how you name it. Okay? So if it is positively charged, so if you're positively charged, it's a cation. Okay? I'll write cation here. Then it's named in English. And it must be named in English. You have no choice. If it is negatively charged, and that's an anion. So if the complex ion is an anion, then you must name it in Latin. You have no choice. And the suffix must be the A-T-E ending. So when you put it all together, um, I'll get the next slide for this. It looks as follows. You list all the ligands, the names of them in alphabetical order. It's not the alphabet here. And then dot, 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 as many ligands as there are. And then you put the transition metal in English or Latin, depending on what if it's a cation or anion, and then you put the oxidation state in Roman numerals here. This is to write out the name. 
So if you're writing it out, di uh, diamine uh, tetrachloro uh, iron to ions, for example. Uh, if you need to write out the chemical formula, uh, you do the following. And this is technically how it works, but you'll see a plenty of people who are uh, professionals in the field or even your textbook that don't follow this uh, actual method. But if you write out the chemical formula, you write the symbol of the transition metal, and then you write the anions next, and then you write the neutrals next. So this is if you're writing it out as a complex ion or as a coordination compound, writing out the chemical symbols, Cu, NH3, CO, whatever. Okay, so let's take a look at this one more time as an overview, and I'll zoom out. First, you want to think ligands, alphabetical order. Put on the prefix. Transition metal, what's the oxidation state? And then is the complex ion positive or negative? Positive is English, negative is Latin. If the name does not have a Latin equivalent, uh, then you can name it in English if you have to. All right, that's where to end. I'll see you next Tuesday.